Okay, I'm back. If you can, if you're on the stream or you can see me, give me some kind of a sign, and uh, let's see if this works. It looks like somebody's on. <laughs> no, everybody didn't fully abandon me here. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's see if this works. I actually have uh, I have two different uh, internet connections here at the house. One of them is, um, is right next to me, and the other one is in a few rooms down. And it looks like it, looks like it was connected to the one that was uh, in the center of the house as opposed to the one that's here on my end. So, um, okay. So, I think we're back. And uh, today's topic is the who, the what, the where, the when. And, uh, and for those of you who, uh, who gave up, and I certainly would have given up. Uh, <laughs> uh, just to do a quick recap, uh, when you talk about when on stocking a tank, uh, please keep in mind the, uh, the growth rate of the fish, the diet of the fish, the aquarium requirements of the fish. Uh, for example, you know your, your abuna fish are gonna need some rock work. Uh, some fish are open open water swimmers, and they're gonna need a lot of open space. Uh, other, other fish like to stay kind of tucked away, like your plecos, things like this. These are all considerations that you have to keep in mind when you're going to stock a tank. And uh, for me, the, big, the, the biggest uh, problem I've run into when I've stocked tanks has been um, uh, first, first mix, the mix of the fish. I've mixed incorrectly. And I did it because originally I was, um, I, I didn't really understand. I, I kind of went into it kind of stupid. And, um, and in my mind, a cichlid was a cichlid. And so I'd go to the, uh, I'd go to, uh, uh, you know, someplace like PetSmart or Petco, and uh, I would just buy a cichlid. And, uh, and because it said cichlid. And so I, I, I'd come home and I had this, crazy uh, a crazy mix of, uh, of of fish that ended up uh, really being a problem they ended up going after each other uh, they grew at different rates uh, some of them needed uh, things in their diet that I wasn't providing such as more vegetables things of this nature and so um, I'm not I'm not too proud to admit that that I I, I started with cichlids in a very uh, in, in in a very kind of stupid fashion. In other words, I just said, "Oh, cichlid," and not really realizing. And like so many of us do, how many of you have had something happen, and then you do the research? You you know you do the, the that old saying about closing the barn door after the horse has left. You know, <laughs> I've closed the barn door after the horse has left when it comes to uh, keeping fish. Uh, in many different ways. Yeah, if, you, if you followed my uh, evolution of setting up my sump, I, I sort of threw it together and then I started to get uh, torn apart uh, by people who saw it on, on YouTube and, uh, and, and some of them were very kind and some of them were not so kind. And, uh, and so I, uh, I went through a very hard knocks on, uh, on learning. Uh, so. The point I'm making is this, is that when you're gonna stock your tank, uh, take a little time and use some of the resources that are out there and, uh, and study things like diet requirements, uh, aquarium requirements, uh, parameters, swim space, rock work, and uh, you know, things of this nature, compatibility. I mean, there's even some, um, if you Google compatibility chart, tropical fish compatibility chart, I think you'll actually uh, find a, a chart that shows fish that get along with other fish. And it's pretty cool. I've seen one of those. Uh, Kevin, thank you for making it. I appreciate it. And uh, the, uh, so do, do some, uh, save yourself some of the headache that I went through where I had to give away or, or, uh, or sell very cheaply because I had to get, get them out of the tank quickly uh, where I had to give away fish. Um, I mentioned uh, Kevin before you came on that I that I had a frontosa in a 60 gallon. 
I mean, frontosas need to be in like 125s or larger. They love living with frontosas. They love a tank that is uh, maybe a little bit dimly lit, not quite as bright as, uh, as maybe what you see behind me here. And so I had the setup for my frontosa really, uh, really wrong, but the label said cichlid. So I bought him, I brought him home, and uh, he was healthy, healthy and very pretty, but he seemed kind of depressed all the time. I named him Eeyore, and uh, <laughs> I ended up giving him away actually to Kevin Green. So um, at any rate, um, I just wanted to um, give you that tip on that. And uh, so the what and the when, uh, let's talk a little bit about the where. I already mentioned some of this. Uh, I use uh, I use different uh, sources for my fish. I support local fish stores as much as I can, even though I'm in a little bit of a local fish store desert here in Arcadia, Arcadia, California. And so, uh, what I uh, what I end up doing is I, and and this will probably happen to you, if you um, if you end up if you end up in a uh, in a, in a situation where you've pretty much gone to your local fish stores and now you see a fish on the internet that you've got to have. That happened with me on a red cap, a Lethronops red cap. You've seen my red cap. I call him Photoshop because uh, I always get accused that he's Photoshopped because he's very, very pretty. And uh, he's, uh, he's a fish I saw in someone else's tank. I can't remember who but I had to have him. I had to have that fish. And so um, what I did then is I started looking around. I think I, got, I think I might have gotten that red cap from Live Fish Direct. And by the way, if you go to uh, KG Tropicals and you go to their, um, to, to, uh, their last live stream where they were kind enough to do a shout out to my first live stream. But if you go to KG Tropicals and you look at, at uh, they have a code that you can use with Live Fish Direct that gives you like 15 bucks or something. So anyway, if you've been thinking about a red cap, I would highly recommend because that's where I got Photoshop. And so at any rate, you're gonna see a fish that you love and, uh, and you're gonna wanna have that fish and you're not gonna be able to find him locally. And even though some of you have criticized the shipping of fish because you feel that in some cases it's stressful or um, it's hard on the fish, uh, the fish I've received uh, through shipment have, uh, have all been great. They've all been great. And, um, and what I do is I quarantine them. I put them into a, uh, a quiet, dark tank. I let them regain their strength. And I also, um, I also make sure they're taking food. And I gave this tip in the last video, in the last attempt at a live stream but I'm not really sure if you saw it because it was crashing so much. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what got through and what didn't, but the, um, I try and find out from people that, um, that ship me fish, what food are they using? And that way, if the fish is, let's say, being fed pellets or flakes, I try and match up the food. And my secret food that I've been using that the fish are, find irresistible has been the Omega-1 cichlid cubes. Um, I'm not sponsored by Omega-1. They're not telling me to say this. Uh, I just found that um, with finicky, finicky fish, the finicky fish, they, um, they actually love the, that. Oh, they can't resist the Omega-1 cichlid cube. I think the, the ingredient in it, I think, is, um, is garlic. It has garlic. So uh, another trick you can use if you have a, a finicky eating fish and you can buy garlic, something like garlic guard. Some of you out there I know use garlic guard. Put a little bit in, in, on your uh, pellets before you put it in the tank and that will help if you have finicky fish. And uh, I noticed that we have some, uh, some Spanish people on the feed and they're making comments in Spanish. <laughs> Muchas gracias, amigo. Muy agradecido. So um, if you look at some of my older videos, what you're going to see is you're going to see a lot of uh, mixed, you're going to see a lot of mixed tanks in my very first videos that I started uh, posting. I'm not, I don't think I posted any, any uh, discus 
videos. I think I got onto YouTube when I was done with Discus and uh, because it was YouTube that I was watching to get my ideas on, uh, on what to do with African cichlids. And, uh, but you'll notice I had quite a mixed tank and some of you out there keep mixed tanks right now. Um, and if it's working for you, if it's working for you, that's great. Um, my viewpoint is it works until it doesn't work. And with, in my case, the, the Mabuna, the, um, I had an electric uh, yellow. I had a, a, a beautiful yellow Mabuna that it put on tremendous size, was a beautiful fish. And I ended up having to give him away to a local fish store because uh, he just became so huge. Now, if I had had another tank at that point that I could have used, I probably would have had a Mabuna tank because he was just such a gorgeous fish and I, and I had grown him out. So you get, you get attached to these fish. But um, because I hadn't done um, enough research on the front end, uh, I ended up with this mixed tank that resulted in me having to get rid of fish. So um, for those of you who just tuned in, I want to give a thank, uh, a thank you to John and Lisa over at KG Tropicals for the shout out and also to Trevor O'Shea, for Trevor O'Shea for uh, letting me use uh, a picture of his fish room uh, in my thumbnail. Thank you, Trevor, for that over at the Wonder of Cichlids. And uh, with that being said, I want to go ahead and recap the uh, people that I've used and had success with. I've, I've, of course, I used a local fish store for certain fish like plecos. My clown loaches came from local fish stores. And uh, I also, uh, you know, so I'll, I'll go and visit local fish stores and, uh, and support them if I can, you know. And um, I go to Glendale Tropicals, I go to Pasadena Tropical Fish and uh, places like that. And, uh, but I also have found that I've had to go uh, and, and use shipped fish to get uh, special fish that I couldn't find locally. And, and for that, I've been very, very uh, fortunate to get fish from uh, companies like uh, Cunningham Cichlids, The Wonder of Cichlids, uh, Live Fish Direct, and uh, you know, folks like that, uh, Imperial Tropicals in Florida, I really like what they're doing out there. And I know that some people rag on them because they have these open outdoor tanks, these open uh, ponds. But I've, I've uh, I had the pleasure of meeting Mike. They really are committed to providing quality fish. And I've gotten nothing but quality from Imperial. And if, the, if there's ever been any questions, they've gotten back to me right away. And these are the things I look for with a vendor. Uh, one, do they communicate? Do they communicate quickly? Uh, and do they uh, resolve issues rapidly? Um, if you are trying to order fish and have questions and that person is not getting back to you, um, that's already a sign that there's a problem, okay? So um, the cichlid check in, in Arizona, excellent. Cunningham cichlids, very happy with the fish I got from them. Live fish direct. Um, I've been happy with what I've gotten there, and I believe that's where I got my red cap. Uh, Imperial Tropical has been very happy. Dave's Rare, I, I was able to meet Dave over at, um, at, the, Amer at the Cichlid Association meeting, and the guy is uh, the guy's legit. He is into, um, really into doing a lot for the hobby and into quality fish, okay? So um, I want to read a couple comments here that... Um, that I got from the last live stream that I didn't get a chance to address. And then I want to go ahead and take up some of your comments. And uh, there was somebody named Trey Jasso. Trey Jasso. He said, uh, Trey said, I'm a newbie. I have a, a penguin with a, a bio wheel. Do I need to use the charcoal after I've had my aquarium for eight months now? Um, personally, I don't use charcoal. And, uh, I only use charcoal if I medicate the tank, and uh, and then I'll use charcoal for about um, maybe two weeks, maybe um, maybe maybe a month, and then I'll take it out and throw it out. So I don't use charcoal in my tanks anymore. And um, I'll, I'll tell you one thing though, and this happened just sort of by mistake. I I had a couple different types of charcoal one time, and I I laid them down. Uh, and, and it was a little bit uh, moist where I put them down. And this, this charcoal called Seachem Matrix. Seachem Matrix. 
I don't know what they did with that charcoal, but that charcoal literally sucked up the countertop. I mean, it was amazing. Um, it, it, it was, it, it, it was uh, I mean, it took all the water and pulled it up. And so if you're gonna, if you're gonna get charcoal and you're gonna use it especially for a specific um, use like that, uh, I, I highly recommend Seachem Matrix only because of an of a anecdotal, unintentional experiment that I ended up running that um, that showed to me that that charcoal really is different. Um, Gurvinder Parmar, I alternate my food daily from the regular pellets to veggie. It's important to give cichlids veggie pellets. Now, let me comment on that because some of you might say, I don't have I don't I, I don't have fish that require vegetables in their diet. Why would I do that? But I'll tell you something. The veggies uh, help give, in, and this is something I, I I believe. The veggies, the veggies actually help to clean out and 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 uh, are less stressful for the digestive system of your cichlids. Cichlids are notorious for uh, uh, bloat. You know, bloat is, they just get plugged up. It's like horrible constipation, and uh, they become very, very big, and uh, uh, usually they die unless you get in there and you, you take some drastic steps, uh, you know, put pipettes down their mouth and, and things of this nature, and, uh, and medicate them that way because they're not taking food and, and all kinds of crazy stuff. So putting in some veggies, even with your entirely predator tank, is a good idea and I give these guys spirulina and some veggie flakes every now and then and uh, I'll even fast them for a day uh, maybe two days uh, sometimes let's say I'm going away for a weekend I don't give it a second thought I don't feed them I let their systems completely clean out and then I go ahead and uh, and resume what I was feeding them hello Adam always a pleasure to have you here and uh, so, uh, Gravinder, thank you. And Gravinder, thank you so much for that super chat you did last week. Very appreciated, my friend, and very noticed. Uh, for those of you who'd like to support the channel, uh, go ahead and do a little super chat if you would like. And I'm not going to turn you down. It doesn't make me feel uh, cheapened like uh, a pole dancer that you're slipping dollar bills in my, <laughs> in my G string. <laughs> I will not feel um, uh, cheapened by you doing a super chat. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I'm out of control. So um, Paul, Paul S. had a question. When doing water changes without buckets, do you dechlorinate in increments as your aquarium is filling up? Um, what I do is, uh <laughs> now I'm getting pole dancing comments. Thank you. So uh, what I do is um, I add the water and I just simply pour in, as the water is coming in, I simply pour in and the water is coming in next to the output of uh, one of my filters. I have on this tank behind me, for example, you can't see it, but behind this, all this uh, shrubbery <laughs> right here from Elite Cichlids, a little plug there for Elite Cichlids, this shrubbery right here, uh, behind that, there's the overflow, which of course is off during a water change because the water level is down. But, uh, <laughs> sorry Steve. So, uh, but there is a uh, Sun Sun 704 output back there behind the overflow. And that thing stays on during a water change because it's able, it's so strong, it can pull up the water. And, uh, and so, what, uh, what I do is I, is I put the, uh, the prime, in the, in the case of this tank, I use uh, safe, Seachem safe. Uh, you know, like, like a couple sprinkles will do uh, 100 gallons. And so I, th I, think it's a, I think it's a quarter, a quarter teaspoon does 75 gallons. So the stuff lasts forever. So for my bigger tanks, I use safe. On my smaller tanks, I use prime just because it's easy. But... Um, I'll pour it right near the output so it gets spread out throughout the tank as the water is, is coming in, and I'll just do it once. I used to do it in increments. I haven't noticed any difference, really, doing it in increments. I hope that answered your question, Paul. If you're still around, 
um, and you didn't bail during all the crashes on the original feed. Uh, Ruben Rivera asked, uh, Ruben Rivera Jr., out of all of your fish tanks, which one is the one that your wife likes the most, or which fish does she like the most? Um, this is kind of a uh, sad topic for me, <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you why. The, uh, the uh, fish that she liked the most was my polystigma, because my polystigma had this, this big face and uh, would hang out by the front, and she would, uh, she would look at him, and he would look at her, and uh, unfortunately, the polystigma, and thank you, GP, I see that, the polystigma was, uh, was ambushed, I believe, by the venusus, and the venusus was, uh, uh, took him out, essentially, uh, gave him a gash on, his, on the, his, the side of his body, and then I put him into QT, but he didn't survive. So um, that was her favorite. She's been, um, uh, she's been wanting me to um, get into discus. She loves discus. She loves the, uh, the sort of peaceful activity of a discus. And a discus tank would be uh, a great tank for like where I have this one in my bedroom. It would be a great tank for a bedroom because they're just very peaceful and quiet. These fish uh, at night while you're sleeping a splash will wake you up because they're, uh, they're actually attacking, they're going after each other. And so um, sometimes you'll get woken up by a, a midnight ambush. So um, at any rate, let's go ahead and uh, take up some of the questions in, in today's chat. If you have anything that you would like to ask, um, and thank you for those of you who have done the super chats, and for those of you who have hit the like button, and most importantly, uh, a big thank you to, uh, uh, to those of you who have hung in there because we had uh, some problems on the, initial, on the initial broadcast. And so um, at any rate, I want to thank you for, for those of you who came back. And uh, those are, that's loyalty. There's, there's loyalty for you, you know. <laughs> at any rate, so if you have anything you'd like to ask that is on topic about fish, I would be happy to go ahead and give it a shot right now, assuming I can read it as it scrolls through. And uh, go ahead and uh, ask your questions now, and uh, we'll go from there. And if, uh, let's see here. Thank you, William. I appreciate that. Yeah, I still appreciate your Motor City cichlids. You don't have to uh, do a super chat to be greatly appreciated. What was the first fish that uh, really uh, piqued my interest? Um, you know, I've got to go back to when I was about um, six or seven years old. And my uh, parents, I don't know where they got it from. But they, they came home with this little five-gallon tank. And it had a, uh, a, a, um, a Razabora a Razabora in it, and uh, I was instantly, uh, instantly in love. Thank you, Felix. I appreciate that. And uh, uh, so I was hooked at that moment, and uh, then I ended up with a, a job that required me to travel a lot. I was living the life uh, a little bit like uh, Zenzo Tozawa. I don't know how Zenzo does it, but he does. He's kind of like Superman. And... Um, but I was on the road for two or three weeks at a time, and so keeping fish was not, um, was not really, didn't make any sense. But then I uh, came off the road. I bought my uh, oldest son an aquarium, and then, uh, and then as happens so often with parents, you buy uh, a pet or something for, a, uh, for somebody, and, uh, and uh, you end up inheriting the pet. <laughs> So the aquarium ended up becoming my aquarium. That's the 30 gallon that I use now as a quarantine, ta quarantine tank. Now somebody asked if I use salt. Uh, no, I don't, I don't use salt. I, use, um, I do use a product by Seachem, uh, which is a, uh, they call it salt, but it's not salt. It's really more amino acids, or um, I'm sorry, not amino acids, I take that back, scratch that. It is trace minerals, 
trace minerals. And those trace minerals are, um, they have a formula where they try and, uh, and match the trace mineral combination of, uh, of Lake, uh, Lake Malawi. And so that's, that's what I use. I do use a little bit of that. Now, that being said, I, um, I underdose. Uh, this, the water in Southern California is very hard. It has a lot of minerals in it. Uh, and so I just, I just put a little bit in there just to give the fish an edge, a little, bit of a, a, a little bit of a trace mineral edge. You know, there's a lot going on, a lot going on with fish through their, uh, through their skin. There's a lot happening, uh, you know, through their skin, through their gills. And uh, so, you know, nutrients in the water are, are in some ways just as important as what they're taking in through their mouths. So, um, so there you go. So let's see here. What else have we got here uh, on the questions? They've been streaming by and, and on my phone, I can't really go back and recover them. So if you have any questions, go ahead and, uh, and ask them now. And uh, Um, somebody asked about multiple tanks and, um, should, should I run a large, you know, first of all, I encourage you to have a couple tanks and because sometimes you need to move things around quickly. Uh, sometimes you need to, uh, separate fish. And so, uh, keep, uh, keep the, um, uh, definitely keep the different tanks and, uh, and, but if you're going to get into um, cichlids, start thinking, start thinking with, uh, with 100, 150, and, uh, be, or, you know, a bigger tank because they are going to need that extra, extra space. A 125, you know, six feet across, they, they're going to, they, they're going to want that extra swim space and you're, wanna, you're going to want to give uh, fish in the inevitable chases that occur, you're going to want to give fish room to get away and to move around. Okay, so uh, somebody asked about fry food, uh, fry food. With uh, fry food, the, um, all I do is I take flakes, good quality, get some, get some cichlid flakes, and just crumble them up. Turn them into uh, powder and just drop them in. And uh, there's, your, there's your fry food. That, that's what I've been doing, okay? Um, somebody uh, is making a, a horrible joke. And I mean one of the worst, worst jokes you could ever make. They're calling me a San Francisco Giants fan, and uh, that, that's horrible. How could you ever say that? Uh, Candy, be sure to uh, uh, block. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this, is a Philly, this is a Philly shirt, only because my son works for the Philadelphia Phillies, the, uh, but actually I, I bleed blue. I uh, bleed blue because uh, I grew up two blocks from Dodger Stadium, and this is going to tell you how old I am. I could hear the Beatles playing. Uh, that's how close I lived to the stadium when they played in the 60s. So, uh, no, don't block him, Candy. I'm just joking. <laughs> so I am a Dodger fan, and, aren't, and we're having a great season. So, um, so for fry food, that's what I would do. Someone asked about using a reverse, uh, an ROI system. Um, I don't know about ROI systems. I really can't, can't comment on them because I haven't really had a lot of experience with them. I do know that um, if, you, if you add an ROI system, you're going to be stripping out all of the, um, all of the minerals, good or bad, and then I, I think somehow you need to then re-add them in the correct, in the, in the correct uh, percentages. And so it would seem to me like, um, like an ROI system, you would have to really be on your game and really be testing those dissolved solids, your, your minerals and things of this nature, and be very accurate if you're going to go that way. I also know that you would probably want a, um, a good high-powered um, uh, UV system if you're going to go into a discus tank. And by high-powered, I don't mean the little UV light bulb that they put into a Sun Sun canister. I'm talking about those, those twists 
that really give the water a lot of chance to interact with the UV as it goes through. And, and also um, a pump that moves the water slowly past the UV because if you have a, you know, a thousand gallon per hour pump and, you're, um, and, and a little nine watt UV and, and uh, it, you know, it's not going to do really anything except maybe do a little bit of clarify. It'll clarify the water a little bit. I did notice some of that uh, when I run the UV in, in the Sunsun 704 in the tank behind me. Uh, which I'm using strictly for mechanical filtration. It is full, full from top to bottom. It is full only of sponges. That's all it has in it. Strictly, uh, uh, strictly mechanical. So uh, uh, you'll probably want a UV. It looks like we have quite a baseball conversation going on. And uh, thank you. <laughs> Kills pathogens if strong enough. Yes, your UV actually, if strong enough, there's the key word, you know, 24, 25 watts, um, and and the water going by it slow enough so it can make so it can make a difference. Okay, so uh, hey, Lisa, Lisa, how are you? And uh, <clears throat> glad to see you here. Uh, give John a hug. I know John was talking about how he's 19 years uh, younger than I am. That importantly was uh, that that apparently was a very important point. So. <laughs> I have one word for John, Lisa, hair. That's the, all I'm going to say to John. <laughs> I love you guys. So um, at any rate, so let's see what else. Yes, you're right. The high flow and, and the low wattage the, the low wattage is, uh, is, is going to make those UVs uh, that are in your, um, on the one hand, you want canisters that are pushing a lot of water. On the other hand, you're going to have a uh, situation that, that uh, makes the UV uh, a, a bit worthless, okay? So um, I haven't really had enough time uh, to, to, te to really give you an honest opinion Someone asked about the, uh, the, new, um, the, the new media that I've added, and I haven't had enough time to really give you, a, um, to give you an honest take on them. I'll tell you one thing, my, my uh, sump, can you hear this behind me? I know that Jay Wilson uh, uh, put out a video saying that he felt that, that uh, canisters were superior to sumps because of the, uh, how quiet they are, but... Um, can you hear the sump behind me? I mean, it, it's in my mind, it, it's 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 pretty. It's about as noisy as when I used to run a couple hang on backs on a sixty. So, um, uh, but I don't think I think that the the noise of the system that uh, Jay had was was too loud for his taste, and so he put out a uh, and he put out a, a video on how he felt that. Canisters were superior. I don't think canisters are superior, and, and uh, so I can't, I can't agree. I can't agree with that. But at the same time, I can see how uh, noise could be a factor, and I do love how um, I do love how quiet they are. But at the same time, I'll tell you, I, I, I love the added water volume, the added water water volume of a sump. I feel does a lot because it spreads out. It takes anything that might be going on in your tank that's wrong and spreads it out. Like let's say you have a little teeny bit of ammonia that comes up or, or maybe you're running your nitrates a little bit high, maybe a little over 40. The, the extra water volume is, gonna, is going to neutralize that. It's going to spread it out more because you're going to have more gallons to work with. And in, and in that sense, I think that a, uh, in that sense, I think that a sump is is superior and also the flexibility of what you can reach in and and, and pull things out and put things in and I, I think that's that makes some uh, very very uh, uh, just a, lo a lot of fun to work with okay so anything else anything else you'd like to add here <laughs> okay mr. peep I see that <laughs> any other questions Yeah, a little bit. You're right. You're right. Um, you're right, Denny. 
a little bit of a, of a noise in the background, a little bit of water flowing, and uh, you know, to me, it doesn't. It's a very small amount, you know. So, uh, someone asked about uh, red caps. I'm not actually uh, reading. I'm not currently breathing red caps. If if uh, one of the uh, females uh, is holding, uh, I'll get all excited. But I haven't been able to get the females to actually not. Uh, and this is going to gross you out a little bit, but. They, they uh, spit the fry or they eat the fry. And so I don't know what's going on with my red caps. They're a little twisted. Uh, they've got some issues. And I don't think I can get a hold of a uh, red cap uh, counselor. Let me see here. I kept napkins. Someone made a comment about the Maduka white lips. I, uh, just in general, I love Plastidochromis. The Plastidochromis type of cichlid if you go back in my videos, you'll see a video called uh, my, favorite, uh, my Favorite Fish, Favorite Kind of Fish. The Plastidochromis, I have a, um, a John Stoney behind me, and, uh, and just a, a beautiful fish. The, uh, the, uh, the Maduka White Lips, the Star Sapphire, the uh, Jalo Reef. I mean, these are uh, beautiful, beautiful fish. I love them. I love their temperaments. The temperament is very, very, um, it's a very calm, overall, a very calm fish. And if I was to do a drastic change, if I was to take a different direction, what I would probably do is, um, is take the more aggressive, larger fish behind me and, um, and probably redo this tank as a plastidochromis tank and, uh, and have only plastidochromis in there. And, and, uh, but the um, beautiful, beautiful fish, love those fish. And yes, I also love the lethronops, uh, the lethronops, I love those fish. My uh, red cap currently, I would say is uh, just under four inches, under four inches, very active, doesn't get pushed around by anybody, including the, uh, the sand diver or when the, um, when the living stony was in there. He wouldn't mess with the red cap. The red cap has always been uh, in charge, in charge of that 60-gallon uh, tank. Uh, I was afraid that the uh, living stony was going to start asserting himself, and he had put on some bulk and size, the large male, and so I put him into the 100, and he's doing great in there now. I'm going to be putting out a video on some movements. I'm taking the uh, sand diver uh, probably out of the 60, putting them into the 100, uh, that sand diver that is exploding with beautiful color. And uh, I'm going to be, um, and of course, the, the living stone has been moved over. And I'm going to be adding that, uh, that beautiful uh, Malawi hawk. Uh, thank you, Adam. Appreciate that. I'm going to be uh, Adam C. Check out his channel on YouTube, Adam C. Wonderful channel, beautiful fish, large, beautiful tanks. So I'm going to be taking um, uh, and, and moving some things around, and that's going to be uh, in an upcoming video. And also, uh, I'm going to try and do it this weekend. I'm going to do a video on the update on the pre-filter that I've been using on the two Sun Suns 302s that are on the 60 gallon. So watch for that video. It's going to be just an update on the uh, pre-filter on the Sun Sun 302s. I'm getting a very different result on on the uh, on on that uh, on on the pre-filters on the canisters on the 302s. Different result from what I got on the fluval, and I'll talk about that and why I think that is. We'll we'll talk about that in the in the video. Okay. So again, a shout out to my um, a shout out to those of you who were kind enough to do a super chat. Thank you so much. That really helps uh, helps me uh, support and feed the babies. Uh, for those of you that are saying you need to leave, thank you for uh, for hanging in there. This was a very difficult uh, live stream, only because of the crashes that occurred initially. And I want to thank those of you who hung in there and came back on. Very very appreciated. And uh, thank you, uh, Candy and Kevin, and uh, uh, for being moderators. Uh, thank you. Uh, Denny, I, I, I made you a moderator. With, <laughs> I, 
I volunteered you. And uh, thank you again to Trevor O'Shea for letting me rip off his uh, uh, picture for the thumbnail. And uh, also, again, a thank you to Lisa and to John for the shout out that they did. So um, at any rate, uh, if you haven't, hit that like button if you'd like to or don't if you didn't like it. And, uh, and uh, thank you for the super chats. I think that's all for now. I'm going to go ahead and do some editing. And, uh, and certainly, uh, I, I don't want to post a video that has a lot of crashes in it, which was, uh, and I think I figured it out. I figured out what was going on. And that's why we were able to do this second part uh, successfully. So don't give up on me. Uh, tune in again. And uh, I promise I will check uh, in the future which, uh, which router is connected to my phone before I start the live feed. This is a learning process. This has certainly been one for me. So thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. That's all for me today. And uh, don't forget, you really do rock. And I mean it when I say that. You do rock. Bye-bye.